Hi everyone, my name is Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live, Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday live from East London. Today we're joined by our head of school, JC Concado, and we're going to take a look at mixing sub bass. So yeah, today we're going to check out how to mix sub bass and good practices when doing so. It's a bit of an elusive topic. A lot of the time we find our students have trouble mixing sub bass for various reasons, but we all know that when you get it right, it can sound amazing in the club. So we're going to take a look at some of the best practices here with JC. And remember, if you want to learn about more about mixing sub bass, make sure you check out our courses at online.pointblanklondon.com. So JC. Welcome back. Hey, how are you? We've changed studios, which I yeah. should point out. Yeah, we've because we wanted to make sure we could hear it right. Um, we've got these amazing Rocket 8 speakers here in Studio 5 at Point Blank, and there's going to be a lot of sub happening today. Yes. So we wanted to be able to get so it right. To, yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Great. Let's, let's go straight into it. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, the, the thing, the first thing we need to consider with sub bass is how we perceive sound. I think it's because it, it is right. related very, very closely to how you. Some of the mistakes maybe that people make because of the way we monitor. So the first thing to be aware of is something called the Fletcher Manson curve. I think mm -hmm. it's worth mentioning. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to go into greater detail about it, but it's how we perceive sound. And it's basically through several tests, um, Fletcher Manson uh, made some experiment and discovered that basically in order to hear certain frequency to perceive at the same level, not all frequencies are perceived at the same level by the human ear. Right. Therefore, to, to, perci to perceive 100 hertz compared to 1000 hertz uh, at the same level, you would have to play them at a different level. What it's come down to say is that our ear is basically designed to be more sensitive between roughly 1 to 5k. And that's like the range of like the voice, human voice, human voice, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And it, you know, there's a lot of theory about it whether our ears evolve yeah. from for hunting and right. safety, you know, all yeah. those kind and of that's things. That's why. When a fire, fire alarm goes off, it's really annoying. It's really annoying. They've made it on it's purpose. Exactly. They wake you up and, yeah. Absolutely. The same way all the, you know, the public speakers, they're yeah. all targeting that range. You okay. never have the sub because they want to make sure that they're being heard. Um, and for example, you see the curve from our mastering course. So that's why we're not going to go in great detail into exactly the curve and the history and yeah. how you should interpret it. But it's basically taken from the mastering course. We, we talk about it quite uh, extensively. And there's a, a little exercise here that you can listen to. So I'm going to play 125 hertz. And I'm going to keep it exactly at the same level. So the level is set. I'm, set, I'm playing 125 hertz. Now be careful at home, obviously. Play not too loud on your computers because it's going to get louder and louder uh, effectively. So now 250. Starting to hear it a bit more. 1K. Starting to hear it a bit more. But the, the difference really comes here. Yeah. how much louder it feels. And then back on 10K, and some people sadly don't hear 10K. Uh, <laughs> so you see here, and, and I haven't even gone into the lower frequency, but as you can imagine, it applies the lower frequency uh, even more so. Yeah. So what it means is that your sub bass, because you tend to hear it less by, by nature, one of the common mistakes is to push them a little bit maybe too loud in your mix. I think a lot, I hear a lot of students kind of like, I always end up having my mix, but it's muddy. Yeah. And it's often because we're probably pushing it too much. It's one of the reasons. You want to hear it, but sub bass is not fully designed to hear it. Uh, on top of it, another consideration to take on is obviously the design of the speakers, obviously. Yeah. One of the reasons, like you've mentioned, Declan, is coming down here. Yeah, uh, really I, eight inch I think columns. to hear, uh, when it comes to sub bass, I think uh, size matters in terms yeah. of speakers. Uh, so eight inches is the minimum, especially to hear 40, 60. And even then, those, I think, you know, for example, those speakers as a front, as a port, frontal port mm -hmm. here, to be able to, because an ancient driver wouldn't normally reproduce enough of the sub. So the reason those speakers uh, reproduce the, the, the lower frequency, the lowest harmonic, it's because of this port. So again, it's done artificially. So although we hear the sub bass here, it doesn't mean that it's accurate. And this whole thing that we need to be aware of, you know, accuracy against hearing yeah. rate and blah, blah. And even if you did get the speakers right, there's the room to take into account. There's the room, all the room modes, you yeah. know, and the bass is going to be the biggest problem in a room. One of the reasons, because the, just quickly, theory of sound, 
every waveform has a length, uh, as you probably know already anyway, and the lowest the frequency, the longer the waveform, therefore more problems, they go through, they come back, they cancel each other. Yeah. It's all those kind of things, you know, and it's the same way where the bass, one of the reasons the sub bass is difficult to deal with is because it's the most, it's where all the power in a track is. You know, if you look at your speakers here, so I'm going to take uh, a, a little quickly, I've got a very basic example here that we'll be starting to, 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 to deal with. So I'm going to put a bit more level now in the room uh, so we can hear. So you see here the, the, the sub bass is what triggers those, the, the driver, but in the same way as well, I'm going to put. If we look on the, the master fader here, have a look at the sub bass, at the bass anyway. That's really what's, what's registering on the meter. Whereas if I put, for example, uh, where is the hat? You know, it's not registering at all in the, on the same level. And it's the same with compressors, it's the same with everything. You know, the meters really pick up what's happening on the low frequency. Mm -hmm. So there's so much power here uh, that it needs to be controlled. I think right. that, that, that is the key, you know. And there are lots of different ways to, to talk about sub bass. I mean, obviously, you've got tracks that are based on sub bass, like drum and bass, and some, some sort of electronic music where sub bass is going to be much more dominant. Or you've got maybe other genre of music where sub bass is still there, but it's more. The richness of it, you know, it's the... Yeah, the, the it's to there to complement other instruments. Yeah. Absolutely, it's that to get that power, you know, yeah. right, you know. So, so um, yeah, that, that, that's basically uh, more, more or less... Um, I mean, in terms of speaker, to finalize on speaker, I think 8 inch, 40, 60 hertz you're going to hear, but if you want to hear those kind of 20, 30, that's where you need the subwoofers, yeah. I think. Uh, we've played with the SD, of, we've tried some sub pack yeah. on Friday, but we wanted to do, we wanted to do today's session on speakers, so we ended up not doing the sub pack. Um, but they're, they're kind of nice, I think they yeah, could work. Cool. Uh, we're going to give it some time and maybe we'll do another session with him, mixing yeah, on a headphone yeah. with sub pack or something. So let, 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 let's discuss. Cool. So, um, yeah, so th that's pretty much that. One of the things as well to be aware about sub bass is that it's about fundamental and harmonics. So some sub bass are going to have a, a fundamental note. Let's say, for example, it could be a bass sound as a fundamental at 60, 80 or 100 hertz. And then you're going to have the fundamental an octave lower. So if it's 100, right. you would have an octave lower at 50. If it's 80, it would be at, at 40. So all those things to be aware of. Um, so yes, yeah, so shall we dive into the, the first example Let's straight do, away? Yeah. So we've got this basic example that uh, it was basically, it's all started, it's a video that we did with Danny J. Lewis on a mixing dance music course with Logic. Uh, and we're still using that. It was, it was an example about EQing synth bass. So that's how, I, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm using that project, but I've tweaked it in a way that I'm starting to bring a lot of other sounds so we can discuss all the stuff relating to sub bass. Mm -hmm. So in this example, we've got a bass doing uh, pretty much on its own. We've got two basses, this FM bass and this bass. I'm going to start with that bass. Here we've got a typical example of it. It's a one single bass sound, but it has sub bass in it as part of it. You know, I think it's fair to say. Uh, so it's got the top and it's got the bottom end. So one of the things I think we can do, I'm going to put the equalizer here uh, so you guys can see what's going on. So you see there's quite a bit of sub going on with the fundamental here and still a bit of stuff underneath. I personally think it could be a bit warmer. Let's bring a bit of that sub, you know. So now you see what I'm doing here, I'm doing it with a shelf. It's a nice way to, to bring, you know, like you do on an hi-fi system. Yeah. What you've got to be careful, though, when you do that, is that if the rumble underneath is a problem, then you can bring up a lot of problem with the shelf. So I think boosting with the shelf on the low end, you've got to be very quite, quite, quite careful. Uh, I think it would be safe to put maybe a filter, uh, but not that high. That feels quite nice to me. The filter at 30, a boost at 50. Yeah. And now the notes are a bit more equalized. I've equalized the note. Have you noticed if I take that away? The high note is a bit louder. Yeah. By boosting the low note, I wanted to rebalance 
the pitch, if you like, the note. And that, that's a technique used a lot on sub bass. Um, with sub bass, some notes are going to be louder than others, and sometimes quite radically. And I've seen a lot of questions about that, how do you go about it? Uh, and there are several ways to do it. If you program MIDI, you can help a little bit with just putting the notes in velocity. But once it's in mix mode and maybe you're not able to target it, then the thing is to identify the note. You know that every pitch has a frequency in terms of uh, as a relationship. Yeah. Uh, so it's about identifying what is the frequency of that note that you want to turn down with a narrow cue and bring it down. Uh, I can illustrate with here with that example. You see that one? The second note. I've brought it up, but by doing so I can bring it down as well. Now what's happening here is that it's an harmonic. Have you noticed there's several harmonic to the second note? Yeah. So we can take it down here as well. And now it's much more balanced. Yeah. And no compression needed. And there's no compression needed. So you've already balanced your note now. Um, now with sub bass, still, personally, I think the keys, like I've said before, there's so much power that's what's shaking those driver. I mean, I don't know. I'm gonna put just louder a little bit quickly. You see, and that's the key with sub bass is that some speakers who can't really cope with the sub bass are gonna start distorting very quickly mm -hmm. as soon as you push up. As much as it's a problem, actually, we should use that also as a as a way to check if your mix works. Because at the end of the day, if you listen to any commercial mixes, they don't distort your speakers, unless there's a massive track, you know, dubstep track or German bass track, which clearly only is designed to play in clubs. Yeah, yeah. But even in clubs where you've got the big systems, there's so much bass that those systems can handle anyway. You know, you could overdo it anyway. Yeah. Uh, and often I think one of the problems is that because we lack bass at home, or at least we like accuracy, you know, and being able to make judgments with confidence. Um, often you're either going to lack and, or, or often put too much, basically, and you bring it into... And put too much bass sometimes on speakers, smaller speakers, it's not so much a problem because you don't hear it. But it's when you start bringing it into a big club, suddenly you're like, wow, it's taking over. There's yeah. just too much of it. And I think uh, a couple of things that are interesting for me in terms of uh, psychologically. Uh, uh, a mix that has too much bass, tend to sound a bit slower in tempo, less, less exciting, you know, often. It's a, psycho, it's a psychoacoustic thing. Uh, slower in tempo, not as exciting, bring down the bass to a more balance or bring a bit more top and straight away it's kind of like becoming exciting again. Uh, but it's that right balance because if you turn off, try this thing about turning off completely the bass, listen to a track which has supposed to have a lot of bass and it's, you're going to feel slightly uncomfortable. Uh, mm -hmm. And you bring it back and you feel a bit more grounded. Then uh, I think all, all those things are very, very important. It's why, you know, you need that balance. And although it's the frequency you hear the least, they're the one that we all seem to be obsessed with when we mix. Yeah. In, in a weird, it's a weird contradiction, yeah, I think, yeah. but, but, but that's what it is. Um, so, again, to be able to have a nice sub bass that is quite loud, but, but still under control, so your drivers are not going crazy. I think compression is, is quite important to it. It's a way of not reducing the amount. Well, it's reducing it a bit because that's the first thing that are being targeted by the compressors. But what it does, it's almost like putting a, some stop here to moving too much, if you like. Yeah. Uh, and, and you're getting a little bit more controlled. Uh, again, it's part of this myth that people say about compressors, you know, make things fatter. But actually, in the case of bass, you're actually attenuating the low frequencies, this sub bass, so it's not fatter, actually. You're controlling it, there's actually a bit less of it, if you like. So we could try that on this space. Let's see what, what it does. I'm just using uh, native plugins here. In Logic. Uh, yeah. In Logic, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm always resetting them. I hate this, the fact that they come with an auto gain. Uh, with bass, well, it really depends, but on, in that case, I'll put it on RMS. Maybe a slightly higher ratio. You can hear the sub start to, as you bring up the ratio. It Have you noticed how I disappeared the sub? But, I can push the, the makeup gain a little bit. You 
see it's disappeared. I mean, it's disappeared. There's less of it. Yeah. Let's compare. Without. It's just a little bit more controlled. Yeah. Basically. It's more consistent. It's more consistent. It's more controlled. Yeah. And I and think that 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 is Q pre the compressor to rein in the harmonics you yeah, have, yeah. and then the compressor yeah. brings it up. In that case, I would do it Keeps like that. It yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so now let's try in the track, in the context of the track. Now there's a couple of other elements in this track that I think are clashing with the bass to, to, to get that distinction right. But I've used that, uh, that example because it's bare enough for us to hear what's going on. So we've got a second bass element here. And I think it needs, it's clashing with the bass very quickly. Um, let's sub bass here. You see, on the first note. So I think the first thing you need to do is probably get rid of that. So you've just switched on an EQ? I've just switched on that. I've put quite a high cut. Yeah. And straight away you notice how it's bouncing to it against each other now. Yeah. That's quite a nice groove to it. If you take it off. It's very smeared, quite completely classic muddy sound, yeah. Whereas now, straight away they really work nicely together. It's actually quite groovy, there's yeah, a bounce yeah. to it, which wasn't there before. So it shows how EQ can really alter the groove of things a little bit. So quite a fight bass now. I mean, for me, that's what I would call sub, would you agree? Yeah. There's sub going on. But even on small speakers, because you've got the high notes, harmonics playing as part of the sound, and also the high note on the FM, you can play that on small speakers, it still will come across. Um, and then there was a percussion, I think, left somewhere. Yes, yeah, Sam, do you hear all the sub on there? Let's look at it on the... Oh, there's loads here. You see here? So that's gonna really, really mess up your... So all, all the stuff that I... Unless you really need the, the bass element of that, Low, any low content that you can get to it to clear your bottom end so the bass, come, your sub, comes across better. I think that, that that's pretty much what it needed. You could leave that if you wanted to. I think below that it's going to start playing against the kick, so I probably would. And I would probably put one here as well. I think Straight away it works better. Also, we're we're using the analyze, analyzers a lot. Um, we have speakers that can just about just replicate about it. replicate. So but if you don't, even so more important, to check your analyzer. To check your analyzer so. exactly. I, th I think you know all of us at home. I mean, rare. It's pretty rare. Those of us who have probably something that we can really trust at home. I mean, mm. uh, just a few months ago, I, I, I did a mix, ba uh, a mix back in a, into a really big mixing room, which I, I haven't done for a while. It was really quite nice to be able to work on the big speakers and actually I realized throughout the process that I didn't check hardly any metering. Because I didn't need to, because yeah. I, the stuff was there, I could yeah. hear it, whereas when I'm at home, constantly I've got yeah. it. It's about double checking, isn't it? And exactly. play, uh, I think cars and headphones, and like we said before, I mean, I wouldn't recommend mixing on headphones, but, but to check your bottom end is vital. Unless you've got something that, like that at least to tell you where you are. Yeah, I, I know at home I can't, I can't tell unless I check on headphones to be sure. Mm. So I think the key is really, and also the key for me for, with bass is keep on referencing against Swedes that you really like. Because you've got that consistency that you know that is working in club, you know that's working at home on, on, on some speakers on your iPad, whatever, whichever, whatever the nature of the track. So use reference. And they, those are, it's probably the most valuable thing that you can do at, actually at home is use a reference. Because straight away it's going to tell you. Yeah. Where you are compared to that reference that maybe, you know, what, what, what you were aiming for. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that, 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 that's that in terms of rebalancing. So you've seen what we've done with rebalancing a little bit the notes here. Yeah. With, with kind of careful EQ, fairly narrow EQ. Uh, so now in terms of discussing bass and, uh, and kick. Um, 
the reason here this bass works is got quite a fair bit of sub, but it also has higher harmony content. But it, let's look at it, let's have a listen to the kick, I think it's interesting. The kick is fairly fat, it has a fundamental roughly around 50, 55 yeah, hertz. Very roughly. tight fundamental as well. Very tight yeah. as well. But it's got a bit of click as well here. Enough here so that it's gonna come through again on smaller on smaller speakers. But more importantly, there's a lot of space here. I mean I've put a filter just a little bit to make the room, but you see, it has that kind of low end that touches on the sub, but it's not really loud, it's not there, isn't it? It's kind of more there. But I've done that to leave the bass come through. The kick's definitely tighter with that shelf. Um, it is, I think so. If you take it off... It's... M the it works, it's, but there's... A bit cardboardy, the yeah. boxier. I think it's phase, it was phasing with the kick yeah, at that point. Absolutely, there was definitely. And I think that's the key about uh, the, the bottom end in general is that the, the sub year you go in terms of all the sub frequency content in a track is is the phase problem. They phase easily with others. Yeah. And, and that's what we're gonna go into. I think that's the next phase of that. The but next phase. The next phase, <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, good. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's exactly that. I think that's the problem, you know. And I, I think one of the questions is always how much sub, can we have a fat bass, a sub bass, a sub kick, a fat kick, you know, all those kind of, um, and I think ultimately in the tw kind of 20 to 40 hertz, yeah, the kind of what I define as the sub, really. Uh, it's hard to have two things predominant. You know, yeah. it's going to be have either it's your bass or your kick yeah. predominating. You know, dominating that area. After that, I'm talking after that 60, 80. You can have several things. You know, and again, depending on how loud and what's up front, and you know, but you can fit several things in those regions. But the the 20 to 40, having two together, is is so difficult to having mm. the kick and the bass. Uh, because that's gonna, always going to be a bit of phasing. Yeah. Or reinf what I mean by phasing is either reinforcing, sometimes louder, sometimes quieter. As the bass notes change. As the bass notes change and stuff. Okay. And, and we can illustrate some of those examples. So what I wanted to show first is here we've got a kick which is fat, I would say. It's not mm -hmm. small kick, but it's not hugely fat. And we've got a bass which has quite a fair bit of sub, but it's not the most what maybe people would define as sub bass? I don't know. I don't know. I, yeah. don't, I don't know what's the definition for people. I wouldn't say it's subtle, but it's not extreme. It's, it's not extreme, but it's definitely area. sub. So we've got a, uh, what I've done basically is I'm keeping the same kick here, but I've introduced a, a more subby bass. And but basically, just for that purpose, I've taken the EXS24 basically. To just the, the, set, the straight sign preset. Have a look. Ah, yes. Anyone who uses Logic knows that preset very well. It's. Yeah. it's I always have one hanging around. Yeah, it's every, in every mix I do, yeah. You know what I mean? It, it works, it's a sine wave, it does the job <laughs> yeah. perfectly. So let's have a listen to that bass now. I think that's what gonna, people are going to define as a sub bass, I yeah. like to believe. <laughs> um, and listen, let's listen to the track, how it works with... I'm going to get rid of that percussion, it does my head in occasionally. Yeah. And it kind of it works because the kick is not too subby, so they can coexist together. But I think there's a bit more work we can do on it to make it work a little bit better. You notice how it's just a little bit on the verge of pushing a little bit the bass, isn't it? It's a sub bass to be able to hear it nicely. I've got to push it. As I'm pushing it, I'm getting those long waves starting to drive my driver a bit a bit too much, basically. So let, let, let's work a little bit on there. So. I think we can do a few things. Let's listen in solo for now. So first we've got this note. So whether you want it louder or not depends what you want to do with it. You see now we're balancing them a little bit. But this bass, this sub, That's quite nice now. You see the, so here we've got the first note playing at about 40, that's really quite low. The second note is playing at 60. And again, without the 30 hertz, you see how it's becoming a little bit too much now. Yeah, I think that is too much. In, in a club, although it's in tune, in a club, I think that's what's 
Imagine on those speakers, but in a club, on the big speakers. Yeah, it loses You're going to have that trombone, it's losing the definition, yeah. you know, yeah. etc. So I, th I think by straight away, the filter is needed for that. And we could try several things. Because the low note inevitably being lowest, uh, one thing I wanted to say as well is that the lower the notes are, I don't know about you, but uh, I'm sure it's everybody, it's becoming harder and harder to pitch. And sometimes yeah, when it yeah, comes to course. pitching kick drum and, and notes bass, low, low bass like those, often I, I would transpose by one octave higher, yeah. do my pitch. Get and it between bring, plus 12 and 24 and then bring it down. Exactly. Yeah. So you know your pitch is bang on and then bring it down to where it's supposed to be. Because yeah. it's really hard to pitch, to pitch at this, you know. I think the lower you, you, you go, sometimes even a semitone can be, become a bit tricky. Mm -hmm. You're not quite sure, so I think that's the key. So the bass is rebalanced again. I've pushed the lowest one because that's the one we hear the least. Uh, and now I'm gonna put a bit of compression. So again, what I've done with compression, uh, RMS mode. You see how much more controlled it is? Yeah. I mean, it, compared to the other bass line, it's definitely more of like a bed. It's, it's a bed. Absolutely. Rather than a rhythmical element. Yeah. But I think that straight away helps it to. We still have this rumbling, but I think in a club would probably be a bit too much. Yeah, yeah, totally. Getting more of that pulse working. So that works quite great. And now the difficulty would be to judge how much do you put of it. You know, here it's kind of like I can't help thinking, oh, let's push it a bit more, it's nice, but in a club it's gonna be probably too much. That's where you've got to start going around, listening to on your cars, everywhere. Yeah. So eventually you're getting to that balance where it works everywhere, basically. Um, one of the problems with using sub bass only like those where there's no fundament, no harmonics, only a fundamental, is um, is basically on small speakers. They're not going to come through because there's no harmonic. Now, if it's only for a club music, then it's and you're kind of like, yeah, that's fine. But a track like that, that maybe is only based around that, if your main riff is around that, and you can't people listen to it on iPad on on, on laptop, then it's just drums. It just drums effectively. You end up with that. So it's something really important to be aware of, I think, with. With, uh, with subs in general, whether it's sub kick or, or sub bass, yeah. is that are you happy for it? How do you want it to translate on smaller speakers? So it, the, the typical trick would be uh, to double up to bring your sound a bit higher, to bring a bit of that notes. An octave up. An octave up, for right. example. So here, for example, we've got that. Now, the problem with that is you notice there's a big resonance on the high note here. The second note, yeah. The second note is ridiculously. So again, I'm targeting that note. And I think the filter might be a bit too high. It's a bit more balanced now. Yeah. Um, and let's compare with the... So you see here, I haven't changed the nature of the sound of the bass too much, but it makes a massive difference. And I think that on small speakers suddenly it would come through. Uh, and on top of it, I've done it with the S1. I mean, after that, you can do whatever you want, but you could bring a bit. One trick as well on bass is to bring harmonics if you wanted to define the notes a little bit more. Yeah. 
So that, that's subtle enough to make it sound like one sound as well. Does exactly. Like yeah. And normally what I would do with the layer is after that, probably send them both together to a group and compress them together as well, just to get that succession of yeah. gluing things together. Yeah. Um, so that, 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 that's the start of it. So you see, now we've got a really deep bass. It works because the kick is leaving enough room for it. Yeah. Now, one of the other questions that um, is always, can you have sub bass and sub kick? It depends, would greedy. be my answer. <laughs> it's greedy. I would say it, it, it depends. Uh, I think it depends on how much note you're getting from the sub kick. You know, sometimes like an 808 has a bit of a note. I mean, yeah, for example, there's some pitch. rap forms yeah. that use literally a kick, an 808 kick, the pitch that creates the bass. It, you know, that, that kind of vibe. So it's the, basically the kick drum during the note bass as well. Yeah, which that is linked to the decay, isn't it? Like how long your decay abs, is, totally, defines the totally, pitch. Totally, totally. Yeah. So I've got a few kick drums here. Uh, a nice range of uh, fat kick drums that I've uh, done for you guys. Uh, I quite like those kicks, actually. I was quite happy. <laughs> Have a listen. All pretty fat, what I would, for me it falls into the sub bass category. Yeah. But you've seen they all have different category, um, characteristics. Mm. Um, so let, 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 let's replace our, our kick so far. That is nice and allows us, I would say the first kick allows us to fit a sub bass basically, as you've seen. And we were able to fit a couple of different bass lines. But let's try now this kick here and let's start with that one, which um, you're going to see it's kind of a thump. Yeah, but it has lots of sub, as you can see here. And if I take up that, look at the massive amount of yeah. sub. But what I've done is I've kind of tuned it in a way so that it, it kind of works with the sub bass. It kind of works in a way. Mm -hmm. They're complementing each other. Really. They're complementing each other. Now, obviously, it's a bit heavy on the whole mix. But it works. You know, it's not doing too bad. Um, and you transpose that kick, have you? I haven't you transposed it. it to change the sound. Yeah. Ah, yes. yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's another kick. So this one is quite a, th a kind of a, what I would call a thump, low bit of attack, but it works. And then, if you listen to the kick itself, do you hear the after? There's the attack, and then there's a kind of the low, the decay at afterward, that's where the woo is. Uh, and one thing you could do to keep that under control again, one trick I'm doing is compression again. Uh, this time around, slow attack again. And what it does is that it leaves the transient go through and then the compressor. So effectively the decay starts to be pulled in by the compressor, which means there's room for the bass to come in. It's not a side kick. It's not a side chain kind of effect with the kick. And you notice how the sub bass is under control now. But it's still subby, it's still a sub kick. It's nice, working nicely. So now we've got an example of a kind of a, it's not a sub kick per se, but a, a kick with a lot of sub working with a bass line, a sub bass. Knowing this room, it's probably on the heavy side. Probably would have to, let's make the, work, the mix work a little bit better. That works better already now. We've got fat, fat kick, really subby kick, sub bass working together. So you can, the answer to this, can you have both? You can up to a certain extent. Yeah. Another question is, can you have sub bass with low 808 kick. That's when it's becoming a little bit more difficult, but let's try. So I've got a couple of kicks here. Um, my kick drum is here, and I think I've got one on number two here. So let's have a listen. Yeah. 808. Not too much of a release. Kind of a bit somewhere between a thump and just a little bit, but you can hear the pitch. Down, down, down. There's, you can hear a note already. Therefore, you're probably going to have some problem. Um, let's put the bass with it. 
starting to clash, isn't it? There's a flam going on. And so we could try to pitch that and have a listen what happens if you start the problem is you could just about fit a sub bass with a low 808 if they're perfectly in tune, like we've seen. But what happens is if your bass line is changing notes, then you're going to have a problem because some notes will be inevitably out of tune with your 808 mm -hmm. and you're getting a lot of subs problem clashing. Have a listen. Second part seems to be working better. The kick is much more defined in the second part. I'm yeah. consistent. So here, if you listen to here, we've got an 808 sub kick, a sub bass. They work together somehow because they're better in tune. I don't know if they're playing the same notes. I never go with that. I go with my ears. <laughs> but that to me works. But when you go there, there's a problem. Mm -hmm. And I, I think on those speakers, we guess the problem. We start guessing it a little bit. On a, on, with proper subwoofer in club, you would hear it. Prob like you would hear probably a, a bigger problem. And I think that, that that that's a typical example where you could sometimes make an 808 works with a sub bass, mm -hmm. but as long as you're keeping on the same notes, effectively, as soon as you're changing the notes, you're going to have some phasing yeah. issue. Um, uh, to make it even more apparent, I've got another, I think, here. Yeah. Oh, the difference, yeah. So here, <laughs> we've got, it's ma here, we've got a proper long 808 kick. I think. No, 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 I haven't done it properly. Just about. Total mess. Yeah. Total mess. You know what I mean? Certainly uh, clearer on the second time round. On the second time round. So, however. I mean, you would never do it like that either way. We're not advocating no. that you have a kid. No, like exa that. Exactly. It's just as an example, yeah. Whereas here, straight away, with a bit of work, you could see that working better. If we were to start getting rid of uh, more of that bass, yeah. you see what I mean? Because suddenly that shows you can't have two sub bass uh, that are so big together yeah. playing, especially if they're not in tune. Basically, yeah, yeah. That that is the main the, the main thing. And the worst one is probably for me is when you start getting one of those kicks that, um, like a pitched one. That's you know one. Okay. Yeah. Look, have a listen to that one. It starts very high, yeah. It starts very high, hands up quite low. Uh, you pretty, pretty much, there's not much you can do in terms of putting a sub bass to that. Even any bass, any bass gonna have to be quite high, I would imagine, to, to mm -hmm. be able not to pr create problem. Yeah. There's a problem, you know what I mean? That's some, you can't really tell where. Is it the beginning, is it in the middle of the kick? But there's a problem. Well, it's that, it's, you know, the, cl the cliche of bass, people say it's muddy. And that's because there's phasing happening. Yeah. Whether it be on a very small frequency level, not across the whole thing. Yeah, exactly. People tend to think about phase as cancellation. Yeah, but not of it's, the whole sound. Absolutely. But it You've can got what you call uh, time shifts and all those kind of things that are correlation, which is more than just a simple phase. Yeah. It's the time shift, how the sound evolves across, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. before we take a look at the second session, just want to say, make sure you switch HD on on your YouTube. Uh, viewing so you can actually hear this sub bass because yeah 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 hopefully and check YouTube on headphones as well and translating this probably, probably can, yeah uh, yeah because again on, on speakers if you listen on, on your laptop for example or iPad uh, a lot of the examples here won't yes. come through because that's exactly what and they're quite subtle as well and, so. that, and that's what we were talking about I suppose yes. uh, so I think that that's covering the the range of example that I wanted to cover the, the, you know the classic kick and bass clashes yeah and we've seen example yeah. that works. We've seen an example of like quite really nearly subby kick working with sub bass, but they have to be tuned quite carefully. And we've seen an example that just don't, will never work because of the nature of the, of, of the kick or, or, or the bass for that, for that, for that matter. Um, so that was one session here. Now, um, 
I have also a second session. Uh, just to show you a, a quick example, it's something else. It, I mean, here we focused on sub-bass sound on their own, uh, but there's a lot of range of music where sub-bass is still, whether you're mixing rock or even acoustic stuff, where sub is still a part to play, you know. Uh, again, that, that, that kind of low sub and low from 60 hertz downwards, it's usually what, what, what we call the poshness of it. You know, it feels quite posh and nice. As soon yeah. as you've got it, it's kind of, ah, oh, yeah, yeah, a bit nicer. You know what I mean? Uh, so it, it, it's as important. Obviously, it's not, it hasn't got the same role as it has in dance music, maybe, in some, sort of, in some style of dance music. But it's certainly as important as well uh, in a different way. It plays a different role. It's just there as a support to get that kind of like, poshness. Um, so, for example, here I've got a project with uh, some drums originally, let me get rid of the mixer here. I'm going to play the drums together first without the reinforced sound. So this track was done mostly about, it's a pop track that was a remix of it. And they wanted that kind of 90s feel, breakbeat -y kind of like. So we didn't even recycle the beats, they're literally loops playing together. They're slightly wonky a little bit, but that's part of the sound. And then suddenly, again, the drums needed a bit of fatten up. So the kick comes in. But then, if you listen here, one of the first problems I'm getting here is every time at the beginning of it, we've got a, a fat kick going, typically, or boom kick. Originally it was in stereo when it was the mix was given to me, but I ended up turning it as mono. Again, mono compatibility. I think the sub, we haven't talked about that, but I think the sub to me, especially with vinyl, the resurgence of vinyl now, but, but um, it just gives a, a more balance if the power on, on any speakers is the same in, mm -hmm. that, in that regions. Um, after that, if you layer sound, like we've said, if you were to layer a bass sound, with a sub and another part to play the higher harmonics, I would strongly advise to, to get up to maybe even up to 100 hertz monoed and have only one sound, don't layer that part, have that kind of sine waves. Yeah. It's going to be solid, it's going to be there in mono, nicely compressed, it stays there. And then you start opening above 100 hertz maybe and if you're going to have that kind of stereo based sound that you want in, in EDM or, or in some... Um, whatever actually for that matter. Uh, I think I would do it above that and, and, and avoid layering sub together because that's when we've got all those phase issues. Uh, but here typically we've got this big boom. So as you can tell, it's going to create problems somewhere. Um, so here what I wanted to show is a, a simple technique, for example, because people tend to assimilate bass with, you know, some bass with basically synth bass, but here we've got a live bass. But we wanted that kind of like weight to it. So what we ended up doing, um, this one we took in Melodyne and turned it into a MIDI part, but you can do it in Logic 10 as well mm -hmm. with flex pitch. And I've tried it quickly yesterday and it worked exactly the same way. Uh, so we ended up with a MIDI part and we've assigned to uh, EXS24, yeah. Yeah. the sine wave. And what we ended Your up class. with, yeah, absolutely, and when we ended up was that. Difference straight away, you're getting the weight, you know. Because there are times where the first bass I played, there was a sub here, so I could I just needed to EQ it and bring it up. There are times where the content is not there, so you've got to create it other ways. And you've got a lot of plugins as well who do that, you know, like the maximizers. Yeah. Um, I, I used to be a big fan of this hardware, the BBE and the SPL. Sonic maximizers. Sonic yeah. You know, they were great to bring that kind of sub to it, you know. Uh, there was another one that we used to use all the time in the 90s uh, called the Boombox. A DBX. It's a right. DBX, um, same series as the, you know, the 160, and I forgot the reference exactly, but it's called it literally a boombox, and it would be a sub-harmonic. 
it would make up subharmonic. You send a bass to it and it creates subharmonics with it. Um, Which is essentially what you're doing here. Yeah. That's what I'm doing here, except here I've got a bit, maybe a bit more control because I've got the MIDI notes, I can re-trigger the sound. I can. Uh, when you do that, you're really going to have to go into edit the MIDI. I had to go yeah. into and There's too many notes, some of them don't work. Yeah. You know, you've got to adapt it. And maybe you could take out like the ghost notes from the bass, just have the, that's exactly, the key notes that's and let, let it, it bounce around. That's yeah. exactly what I've done. Right. Exactly. You're absolutely right. Um, but it's got fatness now to it. Only the bass is gone. It's just not there. But you see the prime on the kick at the beginning of the next bar. See with the kick. And it's one of those where I was all the way through when I was mixing, every time the kick came in, I was like, I could tell, you know, it was. So what ended up on the final mix is I ended up getting rid of the sub bass only for that first note. Right. So I, I, and, I, and I made the kick a big feature. Right. So suddenly there was like no, no bass notes, just do, 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 and right. the bass would carry on. Again, I left room for it. So I can yeah. show you a little bit the kind of uh, ID that it makes. Uh, I probably can go in there. Let's do a quick, I thought it would be MIDI, it would be easier to do actually. Yeah, I mean you could always, you could always save it. Yeah, so basically very briefly, I can show you just to give you an idea to make some rooms. Uh, mute it. Uh, so I've done it on the beginning of the beat, did I? Yes, just there. And I can push now the boom kick. You see, and the, the, the room that it makes straight away, yeah. whereas before you were getting that clash. Yeah, the flaming. You know, the, the, the flaming of basically um, here, uh, let's put it with the bass, let's play it with the bass. Yeah. You hear the problem? So It's all, almost oscillating. Yeah, totally yeah. oscillating and, and that is typically a, a bad case of bass and kick clashing mm -hmm. together, of sub not really getting on and that's because the, the peak is, is, is totally uh, uh, pitched down so much so it's going through several phases of oscillation, mm -hmm. like every few samples it's probably out of tune basically. So straight away it works better, I've made the room, left the kick, yeah. so... Cool. So yeah, that was loads of stuff. Yeah, there was, it <laughs> was mean, basically touching on... To take in, yeah. There's a lot to take in and there, there's, I'm sure there's a lot more, you know, we haven't gone into multi-band and side-chaining. Yeah, and even yes, what we course. talked about at the very, for, at the very start, Fletcher Munson Curve Acoustics, the way you hear, I mean, we could talk about for hours about those alone, so... Yeah, ab absolutely. And yeah. obviously if you do want to learn you, more about that. That in, in the course, in, in yeah. both the mixing course, the dance, mixing, out of dance mixing, mixing, out of mixing, mastering, mastering yeah. course, they, that, that, that would be reinforced. That's where you want to go. Yeah, I think yeah. it's part of the criti uh, critical listening, that you're becoming a bit more comfortable and starting to trust your ears and not only relying on, on meter. Or yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah, if you do want to learn more about sub-bass, even more than you've just learned right now, uh, you can visit online.pontblanklondon.com and take a look at our courses and uh, we'll be back next Friday with another Friday Forum Live, so we'll see you then. Cheers. Cheers.